boy, oh boy. I've been sitting here continuing to read this Bake Monogatari book. Uh, I'm doing a book club now with my friend, Corax Catalyst. And uh, it's made it a lot easier to sort of contextualize the things that are in the book because he's seen the anime and he knows what it's about. Um, and I just sort of going back through the parts of the book, I've begun to appreciate the writing style a lot more because Nisi Oisen, the really interesting thing about him, um, the way that he writes Adaragi, for instance, the way that he writes that character is that it's almost like Adaragi is constantly making one statement and then contradicting the statement thereafter. Um, and it's really cool because, actually, let me just show an example from the book. Let me show an example here. Um, probably from the first chapter. I think the first chapter would be a good candidate to sort of talk about what I mean here. Um, so, okay. Let's go... Let's go... Uh, yeah, this is the... Do we want to do the last line? No, I think a better example would be at the start. Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch, the girl who's always ill. Where is it? Where is the part that I'm thinking of? I know there's a section in here. There's a section in here that I want to talk about. I was just talking about it not too long ago. Uh, where, is, where is the line? This is why underlining is king. If you don't underline things, then you're not going to know what you're supposed to do. Underlining. Always underline. Uh, underline everything, except don't, because books cost money. Um, I actually forgot which part I was supposed to mention. It was supposed to be some part. It was supposed to be some part where he was talking... Maybe it was in... Was it in Chapter 2? Uh, it might have actually been in Chapter 2. Am I going to continue trying to find this here? Mind your own business. I think. Wait, no. This is the part where he's talking to Hanakawa, and then he pretends He pretends to to go off to talk mis to Mr. Oshino. Where is it? It's a section. There's a section. Uh... Anyway, basically, the way he talks, the way he talks in the book is kind of like, um, it's kind of like he's contradicting himself all the time. I actually don't know what the point was op of opening the video with that statement was. Anyway, I like systems a lot. I, I like having sort of, um, a way that you do things that, that's, that's defined by a pre-established system. I really don't like just sort of anarchistically doing whatever um, just because I, I feel like it doesn't lead to much happening, or I feel like there's a lot of risk in that, because I'm capable of doing really horrendous things. I think a lot of us are capable of doing really horrendous place, or places. We're capable of doing really horrendous things, and so it's important to have a system in place, a rule, to constantly have rules in place that keep you from doing those things. So, for instance, you know, I tend to talk about this sort of ethical framework framework by which I view the world. Now, I, I talk about interconnectivity a lot. I use this word inter interconnectivity, how the things that you do are ultimately going to have a ripple effect on the whole of society. And so if you do things negatively into the world that negatively affect society, um, ultimately the way that you've negatively affected those people is in turn going to come back to you because now those people are in some way going to be influenced by that negativity. Um, I don't really care about this in a social sense, but when we talk about murder, uh, when we talk about, you know, greatly uh, making someone not inspired to improve their life or like greatly disenfranchising someone essentially doing things that negatively affect people in a significant enough way for them to act in a in a in a worse form from then on then that's going to be someone who is not building things or at least inspiring other people to build things i always give the example of a homeless person if you help a homeless person on the street what do they do they go inspire someone else you know from seeing their experience from continuing to be alive they're now an inspiring an inspiring individual to other people around them maybe the person they inspired went on to build my house maybe the person they inspired went on to do something that positively affected me in some way. You always have to be thinking with this consideration. That in and of itself is a system. The, the idea of 
building things, of constructing things, of creating an ideology around construction is in and of itself a system, which is how I view the world. It's almost always how I viewed the world, is that I think construction is is tantamount to good. The more construction that there is, the more good that there is, because you're always building things, you're always achieving more, you're always raising the the standard that the world was in and then upping it, you know, upping the standard that the world is in. And I think by positively affecting the world, by making other people's lives better, I'm ultimately going to be making my own life better, even if I cannot see it, even if I cannot see it at that current moment, I'm going to be making my own life better because something that they do, uh, the positivity that I've put into their life is going to positively affect someone else, or it's going to positively affect me. I don't care about the emotional implications of this, because I don't feel good when I do good things for people. I don't feel bad when I do bad things to people. I, I don't have this concept of guilt that other people have. I, I'm not able to just feel guilty for doing things. That's outside of my purview. But what I do know, one thing that I can firmly state that I know of is construction. And so, when I talk about this idea of creating a system around putting good energy or rather putting good things into the world to further the construction of said world, what I'm really talking about is acting in such a way that you're an inspiration to the people around you and the people around you then put better things into the world as a result of being inspired or as a result of being happier. Like, there are people who have watched my videos and then they've been inspired to make more videos and then the videos that they made inspired other people to improve their own life or to be happier or just gave them entertainment. And the fact that those people had entertainment can potentially come back to me. If those people lived another day because their favorite YouTuber that I inspired made a new video, then those are people who have lived another day to potentially do something great, to potentially build my house, to potentially innovate you know, the next phone, the next uh, piece of construction that I'm going to use in my daily life. You know, I've had people who make real art who don't just make shitty YouTube videos like I do, who, you know, who've told me, Star, you've inspired me to work more on my comic. Comics that are actually good. You know, people who've told me, Star, you've inspired me to go further working on my lore, working on my video game. And, like, that's real art that's being made that will positively affect me for the fact that it's being made. You know, I talk a lot about... Um, you know, having so much material abundance in my own life that I can share it with other people. The people who I'm talking about primarily sharing it with is artists, people who construct, artisans, uh, technicians, people who construct things to build society ar around them better, to build themselves into a, a better being as a result of having created these things. And, you know, when when i when i have enough money to firmly support my own self and when i have enough money to be able to to live quite well i want to take that money and i want to put it back into the world i want to look at people who are my favorite artists who are making things that i enjoy and i want to directly support them monetarily that is that is a systemic change it's it's not an individual change of me saying i feel an emotion therefore i do this thing it is an ethical system of morality that i well maybe not of morality because i don't believe in morals i don't think morals are a good concept I don't like having morals. I don't like the idea of morals. I'm, I'm generally against morals as a, as a concept. But it's a system of action. It's not a system of morality. It's a system of action. They are principles by which you live your life, regardless of the moral implications of them, regardless of, of how you view the world morally. They're a system of action. And I love systems like that because they're able to command your life. They're able to, you know, firmly say, consistently say, these are the actions that we take that are broadly applicable. You know, you can change in specific ways. I think everyone should change in specific ways throughout their life. But these are consistent, broadly defined rules. And this is why I don't have specific rules is because if I had specific rules, then, you know, they would be too authoritative in how they commanded my life. And I wouldn't be able to change. I'd be in too narrow of a view. But 
these broadly defined rules that can be applied to a wide range of settings, um, I think are really, really good as a system of action because you know each one of your actions going forward are at least going to construct something. Each one of your actions going forward by adhering to this code, by adhering to these, to these basic principles, are going to do something positive consistently within your own life regardless of the moral, emotional, or ethical implications of them. They're just made to build. That's what I believe in. I believe firmly in the act of building. Um, and it's been something that I've had a lot of trouble explaining. I've had a lot of trouble explaining this sort of theory of interconnectivity that I have that like everything we do is ultimately going to affect other people. You know, you watch the video I did. Um, it was called like the importance of kindness or something like that. I made this video like seven months ago. It's like six or seven months ago where it was literally a written video where I basically tried to argue this. Um, which I think, I think that's a good video to watch if you want to get an understanding of what my general stance is, is that like, by building the world around you for others, you're also building a world for yourself. Because those people who you've just helped construct their own life are now going to construct a life for you. They're now going to construct your housing. They're now going to come back and return the favor by giving you something positive in return. Or positively return that favor to someone else who ultimately does so to me. And uh, that's a system. It's not a moral or, eth you know, it's not a moral idea. It's not a moralistic idea of you should do these things because they're morally correct. I'm against that. I don't believe in morals. I don't believe in morality. What I believe in are systems that work. What I believe in are things that work on a purely pragmatic level. And I think what I'm talking about here as a system, at least in my case as an individual, has been a system that has worked. And it it's something that's observable in reality but is also you know this this sort of unquantifiable thing where you're not always going to observe the results of it because you're not always going to keep in contact with that person but you know that some result will exist regardless and ultimately results results achievement foundation construction these things are going to be the principles uh, by which this system is governed and by which this system continues to be carried out um, and it's not even just like for my own life. Um, it's also just like, you know, I love governmental systems. I, I love building systems around sort of constructing a, a better society and creating a system that is adaptable, but is also broadly, um, broadly defined in its goals. I absolutely love stuff like that because I'm not able to understand things on an individual emotional level because my emotions are too weird. They're too nuanced. They're so nuanced to the point that I just don't want to think about them. Where like, I don't feel so many things that other people feel that it feels like my, my entire heart has been replaced with another brain. That in order to understand my own feelings and my own heart, I have to use systems in order to do anything. Uh, you know, these, these very like detached, you know, these very detached action oriented systems are the only way that I can really understand the foundations of how I think because I just don't understand what's going on in my head most of the time. Where, like, there's so many basic things like empathy or guilt or, you know, the ability to just understand other people that I just don't possess as a human being, that I just literally do not care, that the only way to continue acting in good faith or to continue acting in a way that society would deem uh, redeemable or, or good in any, in any sort of form is to build systems and rules that are just never broken. Um, but ultimately, it does come back to me because I don't believe in morality. I don't believe in the idea of lifting others up for the sake of lifting them up. I believe in lifting others up for the sake of utility, for the sake of it coming back to me to ultimately benefit me. Um, you know, the person's house who, who I helped in its construction might be the person who builds the next game that I really love. You never really know. And so you just have to keep acting in good faith as a result of not knowing that. But you can act with at least the idea in the back of your head that it might, where generally speaking, generally speaking, these positive things do come back in a positive way. 
Um, that's why I've tried so hard to sort of eradicate my more manipulative or or almost dangerous tendencies at certain times, because ultimately destroying, tearing things down is not going to benefit me. Sure, it may benefit me in the moment to get the rush and the satisfaction of killing someone, but that's just tearing someone down who could have ultimately been the constructor that in my own life constructs something that's important to me. Um and I think that's really important. Systems. Systems are the way we govern our lives. Systems are the way that that our lives can be carried out in the most efficient, effective way, regardless, regardless of however you may feel in the moment, whatever rush of emotion you may get from doing something. If it's not in service of construction, then there's no point of it. If it's in service of de- of deconstruction, of destruction, then, you know, it's it's just there's there's going to be no point to it. It's just tearing things down. It's just making life worse for no rhyme or reason whatsoever. And uh Hopefully that makes my point. Um, I'm too autistic to understand anything without without building an abstract, arbitrary system in my mind to to be able to understand it. That's how much of a, a detached, uh, unempathetic, cold person that I that I am that I've become. <laughs> but I mean, at least if your actions are good, I guess that's what counts. <laughs> you know, I always say it's not the thoughts in your head that matters; it's the actions and how they manifest. You know, no matter how many of these videos, of, no matter how many of these Mexican cartel videos I watch of <laughs> literal children being killed or like literal like people with a fucking chainsaw being taken to them to torture them to death. I may enjoy that. I may want to do that. And I do. But the, the simple fact at the end of the day is, is that I'm never going to act in accordance to those desires, because I know those desires are in service of destruction rather than construction. And uh, you have to have a system that advocates for constructing over deconstructing, because if you don't, then it's ultimately just going to lead to chaos. And maybe what you want is chaos, but... I've come to the conclusion that it's going to be inherently more beneficial to me to construct because the people who I am constructing around me or the people who are constructing things around me are going to be people or their actions as people, their existence as people are going to be influencing in one way or another someone who benefits me or they are going to directly benefit me. Um, So I'm just really autistic. This is the psychopath mindset in a way. This is the principled psychopath mindset, I guess. I guess that's how you could define it.